Hi, this video is to help you get started finding your way around a little bit in our studio. Now, before you start watching this video, you should have downloaded R and our studio using the instructions in the um, Getting Started tab in Blackboard. And you are, for the purposes of this course, there's no reason to ever open R. You're going to only open R Studio which needs to have our sort of working in the background, but it is an interface that we are going to use to make our a little bit more user friendly. So when you open our studio for the first time, you should see a screen that looks like this one. And sometimes people are a little disconcerted because it looks like there's nothing really going on there, um, but this is what it looks like. So you'll see as we get in here for the first time, we have three different windows. Um, the big window left here is our co command console. This is where we can enter commands in R if we want to, um, for instance. And I can use R with functions, but I can also use it just like a calculator. So for instance, I can write 4 plus 6 and press enter, and it gives me the answer 10. Now, the thing about working in the console is that once I've entered a command, it's executed right away, and then it's gone. I mean, I could copy and paste it back in there, but I don't have some sort of record of all the commands that I've entered. So most of the time, instead of working in the console itself, it is beneficial to work in what is called an R script file. And so please get in the habit every time you come in to work in R, of first thing you want to do, is open an R script file. So here's how we do that. In the upper left corner, where we have this little plus sign, if you click on that, you can click on R script, and it creates an R script file, which is now, we see, instead of three windows, we now have four windows. The top window on the left-hand side, this is where I can type my R script file. So for instance, if I wanted to write 4 plus 6, if I press enter here, it does not execute the command and add those two numbers. But if I go back up to that line and I click on run, then it will run it and execute it. And if I wanted to add up some other numbers, like 5 plus 32 and 7 plus 12, things like that, I could highlight an entire section of my script file and run it all so that it tells me the answers to all of those things. Right. So this is a nice way to be able to duplicate an analysis that you did previously by saving the R script file and being able to go back up and work in it. It also gives me a way so that if I realize that what I meant to do up here is I meant to add 5 and 22, I can just change the one thing I want to change and run it again instead of having to retype the whole thing, which isn't a big deal if I'm just adding two numbers, but as we get into more complicated functions, it will be more of a convenience to be able to do this, and also to be able to copy and paste things and edit them and stuff like that in your R script file. So that is the first thing. Um, the next thing I want to show you is how we can get data into R from a file. Now, some of the labs, in fact, most of the R labs are going to ask you to import data from the internet, and it will use something called a source function to do that, and there'll be very explicit instructions in the labs about how to do that. But in situations where you have data in a file that you want to bring into R, um, you can open an R data file by coming up to this top right window and clicking on it this open file, and then we choose our location where we want to get our data stored. Let's see, cars 2015, that's an R data file, and it imports the data file, so now it tells me 
that cars, cars 2015 is in my data file. If I click on that, then over in this upper left window, I can look at that data file and I can see all of the variables that are stored there. And so, for instance, I can see um, that I have the fuel capacity, fuel cap. Now, if I want to say plot, make a, I'll make a box plot of the fuel capacity. I'm going to use a function called box plot. And in R, when you type the name of a function, then you type parentheses and you put the arguments that the function needs inside. If you're tr ever confused about what the possible arguments are for a function. In the bottom right corner, one of the things we'll see, there are a whole bunch of them here, but one of them is help. If you come over here to the search bar, I can type box plot. And it gives me information about how to use that function. So that's another useful place to get some help if you are trying to use a function and it's not working properly. In this case, all I need to do if I want to make a simple box plot for one numerical variable is type the name of the variable inside the parentheses. So to do that, I would want to do the fuel capacity, but I need to tell it if I just type fuel cap, let me just make sure, fuel cap. and then run my function. It tells me fuel cap is not found. Now we know that that's a variable in this data set. So why isn't it finding it? The reason it doesn't find it is because whenever I'm working in R like this, I need to tell it not only the name of the variable, but also the name of the data set that it's in. So what I need to do is I need to tell it that I'm looking for. So in the parentheses, I put in that I'm working in the data set cars 2015, and then I put a dollar sign to separate the name of the data set from the variable. And if I run that, it makes a box plot. As you can see, in the bottom right corner, in addition to the help, which I can scroll to by clicking on help, I can also look at my plots that are generated. We'll learn about how to make lots more plots and graphical summaries and numerical summaries in our labs. But for now, there's just a couple of other things I want to point out to you that you have to be careful about with R. One of them is that R is case sensitive. So for instance, if I, instead of writing fuel cap with a capital F, had done a lowercase f, it would give me an error because there is no such variable. It's case sensitive. Another thing to be careful of, again, if I run this as it is, it's, remember, working perfectly fine. If I forget a parentheses, and try to run it. You can see that nothing happened this time. Maybe you can't really tell because, here, I'm going to get rid of my plots. This little sweep button down here will clear out all the plots that I have there. It always makes sure that I really want to do that. Yes. So let me run. Now, if I run this without my parentheses at the end, clear these out again so we can see. There we go. Okay, so I want to run it without my parentheses at the end. You can see that what it has done now is it's not giving me, it gives me a little like a greater than sign when it's ready for the next command. But here, it's not giving me a greater than sign. It's giving me a plus sign. 
anytime you see a plus sign down in your command console, it means that it's looking for more information from a function that it's already been told to run. And so in this case, it didn't get that second parentheses, and so it still thinks that I am trying to give it more information about what to do with this box plot. So if you see a plus sign and you can't figure out how to get it to stop, like I, I don't know what to do, it's not doing anything, it won't execute any commands, all it does is say errors, um, type a closed parentheses, go down to your console and type a closed parentheses, and you'll get your console prompt back, a little greater than sign back, so that you can enter commands again. And then go up and look at the one that you tried to enter and say, okay, it's missing a parentheses, that's the problem and it will actually, once I added the parentheses, it didn't run my box plot, right? But kind of, that was the problem. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to show you just for sort of quick purposes is how to export graphs. So it's actually very, very simple. If you're in the plots, you can scroll. Let me make another one, let's see. I'm gonna make a histogram of the same data so that we have more than one to look at. You can see it autofills and I can choose my data set, and then I put the, parent the dollar sign and it will give me options for my variables that I'm interested in. Okay, I'll make a histogram of that same data, we'll run that. So if I want to get from plot to plot, I can scroll back and forth to look at the plots of the data. And if there's one that I want to, say, cut out and paste into a document like my R lab, for instance. I could um, click on export and then copy to clipboard. You can also save them as an image or a PDF, but usually for the purposes of including them in a lab, you're going to copy it to the clipboard. And then here you'd say copy plot, and then you can go in and paste it into whatever document you're working in. Now the very last thing I want to show you how to do is I want to show you how to save your R script file and kind of clean everything up and get out of here. So if I want to save my R script file, I just come so that I'm in my R script file and I do file and I say save as and I give it a name. and I save it, and then I can close it. And then if another time I wanted to work in it again, I could just open it back up. Whoop, not the plus button, that's gonna make a new one. The open file button, and I can open it back up and pick right back up where I left off, working with my R script. So again, get out of there. Um, if I want to clean out the data that I have in here, I can use the little sweeper broom and it asks me, are you sure that you want to remove all the objects? I can click yes. If I don't do that, the ones that were in there when I closed down the last time will be there again the next time, which isn't the end of the world, but it just sometimes makes it so that you have a whole bunch of different data sets loaded in there when you come in and it can be a little bit messy to work with. I can close these things up if I want to. Now I'm seeing the whole console again. If I want to get rid of my plots, again I use the broom and sweep to get rid of those. And then last, every now and then somebody's frustrated because they're like, how do I get rid of all these old commands in the command module? You use control L to do that. Control L gives you a nice clean console. Now it looks just like it did when we started. So hopefully this video gives you just a little bit of extra help figuring out how to move around in RStudio so that when you get started in the lab, you get off to a good start. There are very detailed instructions in the R labs, but if you feel like you need any help along the way, remember that's what I'm here for, so don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks, have a good day.